so here we are, 1 p.m. I'm super excited to start off this session, Security Best Practices for Bubble Apps, with the Flusk team, AKA our newest Bubble team members. Please, yeah, please help me in welcoming Victor Newell and Wesley Vasileski. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> I should be thinking all day long about this exciting Flusk acquisition. But believe it or not, I spend most of my days thinking of the Roman Empire. <laughs> and something I really find fascinating about this era is that at a time when something we used to believe was impossible, we used to refer to them as black swans. So something as simple as just taking a flight to New York back then we would say, oh, taking a flight to New York is like seeing a black swan. It's impossible. The reason behind that is that at a time, we didn't know black swan were a thing. And this went on until this man, Willem de Fleming, a Dutch explorer, found out about black swans. This, in retrospect, was quite predictable. We had white, but also pink swans. There were tons of other animal species that existed in black. And especially in that era, we knew that we were constantly discovering new things. So why not a black swan? The consequence of the discovery of a black swan is that we now use the saying, when pigs fly, instead. And this? is the very foundation of the black swan theory. Brought by Nassim Taleb, it basically tells us that when something we used to believe was impossible, it often is quite predictable. And it brings changes by its consequences. A very good example of that that we all know about is the 2008 financial crisis. When you think about it, Prices of homes in the US were rising exponentially. We also had banks that were giving out loans to people who couldn't really afford them. And lastly, banks didn't really have enough reserves to cover out for bad loans. The consequences of that we all know about, but I also brought change. For example, better consumer protection when it comes to loans or the sharing economy that basically appeared at the same time with platforms like Airbnb. Now, what if I tell you that last year, in the bubble ecosystem, we just had our very first black swan moment. Something happened that had quite terrible consequences, and it's now up to us to bring change. Good afternoon, I'm Victor from Flusk. And together at Flusk, we are making the Bobo ecosystem more secured. So let's do a quick autopsy of this very first Bobo Black Swan. First of all, the story I'm going to share is based on true events from last year. So for the sake of privacy, names and some details have been changed. Let me tell you the story of Louis. Louis is a great entrepreneur, probably like I guess most of you in this room, he wakes up in the morning full of ideas. And it turns out that one morning, one of his ideas is about an app. It's not just any app. It's a dating app for far-right people. And Louis doesn't know how to code, so he finds out about an agency. It's a bubble agency. There, we'll make the app for Louis. It takes only a few weeks of development, the app is ready. And it turns out that Louis is quite good at marketing. So only after a few hours, a few days after the launch, there are already hundreds of active users on the platform. For Louis, the dream just became reality. And this goes on until one day he wakes up and sees this. This is a tweet from a hacker that says, Right now, it's possible to leak the entire personal database. Marital statue, sexual orientation, email address, everything is public. 
And quickly, this tweet reaches 5 million views and so many replies. Even mainstream medias start to get involved, and even TV start talking about it. And it doesn't take long for the CNIL to get involved. Now, for those who don't know, the CNIL is the French police for data laws. And trust me, you don't want them investigating you, being on your back. The consequences for Louis are immediate. Only after a few hours after the data leak, tons and tons of fake profiles start joining the app. They start harassing, if not sometimes threatening, existing users, which quickly end up leaving the app, deserting the platform. Now, until a few years ago, we all used to believe Bobo was just made for MVPs. We thought something like that, such a data leak, would be impossible. And yet, there were quite a few predictable signs as well. First of all, you know better than no one that no code has been rising exponentially the last few years. We also have tons of non-technical people building on Bobo, just like Lewis. And well, let's be honest. Up until last year, people didn't really care much about securing the app. And this? was our very first black swan of the Bobo ecosystem. Something happened that had terrible consequences for Lewis and his app. And as per the black swan theory, it's now up to us to bring change, to bring positive change. And for that, I'll let Wesley introduce you how you can effectively build more secured apps. Hi, everyone. By raising your hand, who knows who this guy is? I bet most of you do. This guy is called Vilfredo Pareto. It's an Italian sociologist and economist born in 1848 in Paris. He introduced the well-known Pareto principle, which says that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. A more visual way to see this principle is to take a look at the following diagram. 80% of results come from 20% of efforts. And this is a principle you can apply in many, many different fields in life. For example, 80% of crimes are committed by 20% of criminals. 20% of drivers cause 80% of traffic accidents or 20% of factories cause 80% of the global pollution. And guess what? You can even apply that principle to bubble security. And you can say that only 80% of the vulnerabilities in a bubble app come from 20% of the security issues. And those 20% are composed of three different issues. Data leaks, bad redirections, and API breaches. But today, I'd like to focus on the data leaks. So let's see together what a data leak is and what you need to have a data leak on your app. The first thing you need, obviously, is to store some sensitive data in your database. If you're building a blog, much likely you'll never face a data leak. But if you're building a financial app or a health application, you will have to store, at some point, sensitive data in your database. Think about Stripe. Think about Revolut. Think about Apple Hills. They're all storing very sensitive data in their database. The second condition you need to have a data leak are misconfigured privacy rules. And if you have those two conditions, you will face, at some point, a data leak. Think about Victor's previous example with Lewis. They were storing very sensitive data, such as name, addresses, political opinion, sexual orientation, religion, 
And they also had misconfigured privacy rule, and they faced a data leak. So now you might be wondering, how could Lewis, the founder, have known that he had a data leak on his app? Well, in his case, he didn't build the app. The, the people to blame are the people who build the app, the developers. They didn't care about security, and they didn't check for data leaks. At Flosk, to check for data leaks, we like to use the test page technique. The test page technique is a simple way to query every sensitive table and have a look at any excess of data based on the user role. Another way to say it is to say that for every single user role, we're going to query every sensitive table and make sure we didn't receive too much data than what we should receive. Let's take the following example with the following app. Let's say we have, let's say we have this app with all these tables and the test page technique to actually want to create a query for every sensitive database. So let's take the example of the subscription data type we have at the top. We just want to write a query on a test page that's going to search for subscriptions with no constraints. After that, we're going to preview the page in the front end, open the bubble inspector on the bottom right corner, open it, find back the query, click on it again here, click and analyze the query, and this is the truth. This is all what gets sent to the front end, to the client's browser. Let's take the following example. Let's say we have these three different user roles in our app. A visitor, which is a logged out user. If a visitor queries the subscription data type, they shouldn't be able to see anything in the query. A visitor shouldn't be able to see how many people are paying for that app and how much they're paying. They should receive an empty result. The user, a user should be able to see only his own subscription. So he should get one result. <clears throat> and the admin, <clears throat> they should get all the results because they probably want to draw charts or create statistics based on the results of that query. So if we run that test page technique as a visitor, we get an empty result at the bottom of the screen. Search for subscription is empty. So my privacy rule here looks properly configured. Now if I run the same page and also analyze the query as a user, and I see this, Remember, as a user, we said we should only see one subscription. Here, we see three different subscriptions. This is how you flag a data leak, because you receive too much data than what we should. If I fix the issue and apply the proper privacy rule, this is what I should get for the user, only one result. And now, as an admin, I'll get many of them. That's normal, because I want to draw charts and create statistics. Now, I'd like to introduce you to an edge case that most Bubble developers do, and it's the main source of data leaks in Bubble apps. Let's take the following scenario. We have an app that contains a company data type with a name, a list of members, and a list of invoices. Invoices is the following data type composed of an amount, the amount of the invoice, the company the invoice is linked to, and the PDF file, which is the actual invoice. If we try to design the privacy rule for the invoice data type, any bubbler would come up with this. This invoice's company is current user's company. And for people who don't use Bubble, this doesn't mean anything. But for bubblers, this means that as a user, I should only be able to retrieve the invoices that are linked to the same company I am linked to, which makes sense. Now, let's take the following scenario. Let's say your app was launched a few months ago. You've got hundreds of hundreds of companies joining your app. And one day you wake up, and one of them wants to leave, wants to stop using your app. The member is probably going to delayed their accounts, the company role in the database 
might get delayed as well, but now your invoices are referencing an empty company that just got delayed. We call it a delayed thing in Bubble. So now, what do my privacy rule looks like? The first part, this invoices company for the invoices that belong to the delayed company. This is empty. And if I query those invoices as a visitor, as a logged out user, as a logged out user, my company is also empty because I don't have an account. So now this is what my privacy rule looks like. This invoices company is current user's company, but the left part is empty, the right part is empty, and empty is empty, my condition is matching. And what does that mean? This means that as a logged out user, I can query the invoices database and retrieve all the invoices that belong to the previously delayed company. Now, hopefully, the fix is pretty easy. You just have to make sure that one of the two parts of the condition is not empty. And you can just add in your privacy rule, this invoices company is not empty. And with Victor, we're building on Bubble for the last few years, and we got tired of checking those issues every day manually, every week, every once, every month. So we decided to build Flusk. And Flusk is a software that runs automated security audits on Bubble applications. The good thing about Flusk is that you don't even have to think about it. Whenever you push a new version of your app live, Flusk going to know. A Flusk going to run a security audit on over 23 checkpoints. Data API, Swagger privacy, test version protection, privacy rule, Flusk covers them all. And every single issue is backed by a tailored documentation explaining you everything about the issue, what it is, which risks you're encountering, and also how to fix it. And for most advanced user or app owners who need to prove investors or users that their app is safe, we also provide PDF exports and certifications. For those who never heard about Flusk before, this is a little screenshot of how it looks like. Every single line here represents a security issue that has been found on your app. And today with Victor, we're really proud to announce that we're joining Bubble. And this big news doesn't mean Flusk is going to shut down, but rather that it will be empowered by Bubble resources to offer more scalability, develop better features, and also provide better customer support so that together we can make security as simple as no code. Thank you.